Hello, Grand Arts. Hello, Grade 8. This is our first lesson as a group of about 270 Grade 8s. Here is our first lesson, all together at the front end, and Grand Arts. Fanny, you have already done the theme in Tiamal 6. Some of you have already done theme 6. But now we are all carrying on as a group, as a whole. So we're starting here for some of it's revision, for some of you it's new work. So we have not done it yet, so it's not new work. Allemaal begin op een nieuwe bladzij, start on a new page, write down that it was locked down maybe. Schrijf die woorden lockdown dan neer, dat je kan weten als je terugkomt bij die school, dus we ons begin het. Lees 1, lesson 1. So this will be lesson 1. In algebraic expressions we are now starting to use algebraic, well, well the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, up to X, Y, Z. The alphabet letters X, A, Z, A, B, D, G, H, P, wat ook al, is deel nou van algebra. Ons gaan nou rarig begin in wiskunde in algebra. So ons gaan in terme begin te kyk na ietsie met die X en die I en die A en die B in. As ek nou hierdie expression kyk, if I look at this expression, hierdie uitdrukking gaan kyk, dan staan daar minus 2, x, i. What does it mean if I say minus 2, x, y? What is in between then? Because this is one of the most important things. This is really good stand out. And like minus 2, gemal met x, gemal met i. You have to know this so that when we start working through the processes, you know that if there's nothing there, it's actually multiplication. So if I say a, b, it means a times b. As I say a, b, but you can a, mal met b. There's also another way of writing this. You can write minus 2x and a little point in between. Now you can put the point there as well. It doesn't look as nice. It's fine. So whether you've write, written the multiplication sign, the dots for multiplication, or nothing for multiplication, it's all the same. So jullie manieren kan allemaal gebruikt worden om te zien. Jullie staan min 2x i beteken mal met me kaar. Mal tekens punten, alles beteken die selfde. Goed, so daar is nou alfabet letters. En hierdie alfabet letters is wat ons noem veranderlik is. These alfabet letters are called variables. These variables can vary. They can be anything. Hulle is veranderlik is. Hulle kan enige iets wees. So as ek nou vir jou gesê het wat is x, dat hy byvoorbeeld 4 is, dan sê gij weet, jy moet minus 2 maal met 4 en maal met wat ook al die waarde van hy is. So it's actually a placeholder, a placekeeper. Hy hou een plekkie vir iets wat moet kom. So ons kan in die algemeen praat van, ons weet nie wat x is nie, maar hy moet gemaal word. I don't know what x is, but he has to be timed with the rest. Then we talk about coefficients. New word, all of these things have different um, connotations with them. You've got to know this wording, the notation, die woorde, die notatie, die manier van skryf. So alles is vreemde terminologie vir jou. So een veranderlijke weet jy nou is die alfabet letters, soos ek na die ding kyk, is veranderlijk is x en veranderlijk is y daar. Die coefficient van die specifieke termen, as ek na hierdie as een eerste voorbeeld kan kyk, in hierdie specifieke uitdrukking, in hierdie specifieke uitdrukking, wat is die coefficient? In jou handboek is het baie mooi beskrywe in syke blokkies langs jou um, werk, dat een coefficient, is die getal, die waarde getal, die getal, uh, um, jol getal as jy wil, of uh, rationale getal, wat voor die veranderlijke staan. A coefficient is the actual physical number, whether it's an integer, rational number, in front of the variable. So if I look at these, this expression here, the coefficient is the physical number that stands in front of them, which would in this case be minus 2. The coefficient van die terme is dan gelijk aan minus 2. So the coefficient van die term is dan minus 2. The getal wat voor hom staan, ons gaan nou een hele groepie van dit doen. We're going to do it quite a lot of, of them now, just now. But the coefficient is the number that stands in front of this term. Where the variables are part of it, but the coefficient is the actual physical number, integer or rational number, negative 2. But, not just 2, negative 2. Onthou, die negatief behoort aan die 2, hy moet ook daar wees. 
Goed, iets wat jy ook moet onthou is, as ek praat van een exponent, ek weet jylle ken dit al allemaal, everybody knows this, we call this a power. The whole thing is called the power. This 3 is called the exponent, where the 2 is called the base. Ek praat van die hele ding, kyk mooi, van my blokkie, die hele ding word genoemd mag. 2 3 mag 3. Die exponent is 3 en die grondtal is 2. En in wiskunde praat meeste mense so verkeerd om te sê 2 3 mag 3. Dit is eindelijk 2 3 exponent 3 en die hele ding is a mag. In maths we very often, everybody um, actually uses it quite incorrectly when they say it's 2 to the power of 3. It's actually 2 to the exponent of 3, but everybody uses it that way, so I'm going to stick to that. The, it's actually 2 to the exponent of 3, and the whole thing is called a power. As long as you know that that's the base and that is the exponent in this power, then we can start going on with next work. The last thing on this board is what separates terms from each other? What sky term van mekaar? So I'm going to give you a few expressions. I can feel a part. Uitdrukkings gee. Hier is drie uitdrukkings. Die eerste uitdrukking, wil ek weet hoeveel termen is daar. I want to know how many terms there are. So you have to realize that terms are separated by a plus and a minus that are not in brackets. And I'm saying that in brackets. It's not in brackets. So there should be one, two, three terms because of those two pluses and minuses separating the one, two, three terms. It's not how many pluses and minuses there are, it's how many terms they separate. So there are three. As ek wil kyk hoeveel terme daar is, dan moet ek kyk wat word gesky dier plusse of minne wat nie in hakkies is nie. Ek gaan nou vir jou wees hoekom ek so sê. Nie in hakkies is nie. Nou as jy na hierdie uitdrukking kyk, Dan is daar termen wat gesky word dier een plus of een min. Terme word gesky dier een plus of een min wat nie in hakkies is nie. So in hierdie uitdrukking, hoeveel termen is daar? Daar is hoeveel termen? Daar is 1, 2, 3 termen gesky dier daar plus en min. Nie hoeveel plus en min is daar nie. Daar is 2 plus en min, maar hulle sky 3 termen van mekaar. But the moment I have a bracket, then that makes that one term, as a, as a whole. That plus there in the bracket makes this whole term one term. That plus doesn't separate terms from each other, only that minus does. Hierdie plus het binnen in a hockey, so hy sky nie terme van mekaar nie. Daar maak om een eenheid. Hier is een klomp faktore, want faktore is gemalde goed. Factors are things that have been multiplied with each other. So, this is one term with two factors, two things multiplied by each other. So daar is een term, twee termen, die min, wat hulle sky, daar staan hy. That's the minus that separates the two terms. So that thing is how many terms? Two terms. Then when we have at the bottom here, another one I want to know how many terms there are. There's no brackets. That's why I want to show it to you as an example. But although there's no brackets, that big division sign means I've got to do it first. I first have to go add that, so it's as if there are brackets around it. So that makes this one big term. Hier is nie hakkies nie, maar dis asof die hakkies moes wees, want jy sou eers moes gaan optel en dan moes gaan deel. So die deel moes eindelijk hakkies hier gehad het rondom, want jy kan insit as jy wil. You can put in the brackets if you want to. But the reason why this is one term is there should have been actually been brackets saying first do this and the division and then you can say that there are two terms. So this should actually have been in a bracket if you wanted it to. You don't have to put it there. But that means only that minus is outside of a bracket. There should have been brackets here. So making those two terms. Jy sal soms voel, jy wil die video net een bykie um, pause, so dat jy kan afskryf en aangaan, dan doen jy dit. If you have to pause the video, so that you can write down everything, that's what you do. And you can replay it until you understand. Goed, die volgende ding is, as ek wil weet wat is die mag van een uitdrukking. If I want to know the power of an expression, then there's one rule. 
if you look at an expression and it can have a lot of terms, how many terms are here? What, what separates terms from each other? Pluses and minuses. Hoeveel termen is daar? Wat skyt termen van mekaar? Plus en minne. So hier is 3 termen. There is no pluses and minuses in brackets. So there is 3 terms. Daar is nie plus en minne in halkies nie. So daar is 3 termen. That wasn't asked. Only answer the question. The question here was, what is the power of this expression? If I give you this expression, what is the power? What is the mag? Now the mag van a uitdrukking is sy hoogste exponent. Kijk na sy hoogste exponent. The power of an expression is the highest exponent. It doesn't matter if there's x's and y's and a's and b's. The highest exponent you can see is the power of the expression. Die hoogste mag of exponent wat jy kan sien. Wat is die hoogste exponent wat jy kan sien? Dis die v. The highest exponent that is here is called the, is, na, is the number 4. Goed, dan kom ons by iets extra daarby. A constante. As daar een term is, want jy het nog al die jare met gewone getalle gewerk. A gewone getal sonder veranderlijke. A term wat geen veranderlijke het nie, word a constante genoem. You've always worked with numbers that don't have variables, and they are still such numbers, obviously. But if a term has no variable, then that, that term is called the constant term, or just a constant. Die constante term, of net die constante. So as ek weer kyk na die selfde uitdrukking wat ek hier nie geskryf, dan wil ek weet, wat is sy constante? What is this expression written from there again? What is the constant? The one that doesn't have, the one of the three terms that doesn't have any variables is 6. Make sure that you've got the 6. Plus 6. You can write a plus 6 if you want. As you will say plus 6, dan mag jy. Want daar net as daar a minus gestaan het, moest daar a minus gestaan het. If there's a minus, you have to write it. And then, if I want the coefficient, again, just a little bit of revision. If I want to take this thing again, and I want to say, what is the coefficient of x to the power 4? What is the coefficient of x to the power 4? I've changed it a little bit, I see, from there to there. The coefficient of x to the 4 is the number in front of the variable. So why do I want to do another one? Because it's a little bit different. I do not nog a eneke van coefficiente, want is nie so makkelijk om te sien, die coefficient van x kwadraat is 2. The coefficient of x squared is 2. But what is the coefficient of x to the power 4? I want to rewrite it here. Minus 4x4 4 over 3. Just this term. Because if I look at this term, and very important, I must also write the minus. Whether that minus is right there in the front, far away from it, closer to it, at the top, at the bottom, it doesn't really matter. But if I want to look at the number in front of the x to the power 4, what is it? There's a catch, and people get caught out in a test on this. The coefficient is alles wat voor die x kwadraat staan. Everything in front of the x to the power 4, sorry, nie x kwadraat, nie x to die mag, v. So if I want the coefficient of x to the power 4, I've got to look at the whole term, and now it's everything. If there's a fraction, it's the whole fraction. If there's a minus, it's still a minus. So the coefficient is minus 4 over Dis die hele coefficient wat voor daar x to die mag 4 staan, dis minus 4 op 3, nie net 4 nie. It's not just 4, it's everything in front of the x to the power 4. A further voorbeeld wat jy in examen kan verwag, something you can expect in an exam. We'll give you an expression, ons geef jou een uitdrukking en ons vraag jou paar vraagies daar oor. So in die, die uitdrukking, wat, wat is die aantal termen? What is the number of terms in that expression? So now you've got to realize, pluses and minuses outside of brackets. No brackets, no brackets, no brackets. So one, two, three of them. But what's going on here? This should have been in a bracket. So this is not going to separate terms. So the ones that are separating the terms is those three. Meaning there's one, two, three, four terms. Sien jy dat die plus en minne wat buitenkant hakies is, daar is nergens hakies nie. Maar moet jy nie dat 
die uh, misleid dier hierdie ene kie nie, onthoud, dis die vangplekkie, hy moes eindelijk in een hakkie gewees het, want een groot deelstreep is eindelijk van herstel om na om een hakkie te hee. So hier is een term, so 1, 2, 3 terme, 8, 1, 2, 3 plus en min is sky die terme, so daar is 1, 2, 3, 4 terme. Wat is, die aand, wat is die mag van die uitdrukking? What is the power of the expression? What is the power? Wat moet jy weet? I'm testing your knowledge. Do you know that the power of an expression is the highest exponent? Die mag van die uitdrukking is die hoogste exponent. Soek, 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 waar is die hoogste exponent? Die exponent, die hoogste exponent is 4. So the power of that expression is 4. What is the constant? Wat is die constante? What is the constant term? Wat is die constante term? Of net wat is die constante? Or just what is the constant? Constant, constant term, same thing. It's the term that doesn't have any variables. Is there one? Yes, it's not just 8, it's minus 8. Om daarom nie net acht te skryf nie. Die term wat glad nie en veranderlijke het nie, is die term insluitende sy teken including the sign, right? If there is no constant, say that there wasn't a number like that, then you say there is no constant term. Daar is nie a constant term nie, as daar nie een was nie. En dan soek ons coefficiënte, wat sê dan is nou weer a coefficient? Dis die getal wat voor die veranderlijke staan. Coefficient is the number that's in front of the variable, actual number in front of the variable. Which variable? Because there's a lot of x square. So waar is die x kwadraat? Of van ek sy coefficient soek. x kwadraat is die term. So in that term, what is the coefficient? See why I'm asking it? Because it's difficult. It's not just 3. It's not just 3 over 8. It's negative 3 over 8. Everything in front of the x square. Alles wat voor die x kwadraat staan is sy coefficient. En sien jy kom het jy vir hom vir jou gevra, want hy is die uitvang en ek jy dis nie net 3 nie, dis nie 3 op 8 nie, dis minus 3 op 8. So if you only write 3 over 8, it's wrong. Only 3, it's wrong. Everything, the whole number in front of the x, square is called the coefficient. Alright, there's lots of new information and the next piece of information is like and unlike terms. We know what terms are. If I give you this expression here, how many terms are there? Separated by pluses and minuses. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven terms. That's not the question. Hoeveel terme is in hierdie uitdrukking? Terme word gescheid hier plus en minne. So daar is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 terme. Maar dis nie die vraag nie. Hierdie vraag gaan sê, doen vir my die som. Simplify vereenvoudig. Nou, as jy moet vereenvoudig, wat is jy om te doen? Jy moet plus en min. What do I have to simplify? I have to add and subtract. Now, you have to learn that you can only add and subtract like terms. Jy kan net gelijksoortige terme by mekaar tel. Nou, wat so ding is a gelijksoortige term? Gelijksoortige terme is as die veranderlik is precies die selfde is. Like terms are terms of which the variables are exactly the same. So if I have a look at these, then I can see there are like terms and there are unlike terms. Unlike, they don't have the same variables. Let's start with a nice easy one. If I ask you to add them, the rule is, if you add and subtract the like terms, you can only add like terms, by adding or subtracting the coefficients. Jy kan net optel en aftrek gelijksoortige terme. Is hulle gelijksoortig? Ja, die veranderlik is hier die selfde. Are they like? Yes, the, the variables are the same. How? By adding the coefficients. Ek gaan net die coefficiënte by mekaar tal. Sien jy moet weet wat is die coefficient. Die coefficient is die getal voor die x. So jy gaan die 2 by die coefficient daar wat plus 3 is stel. So dit geef jou 2 en 3 geef jou 5. You add the coefficients of 2 and 3 together and you've got 5. What happens to the x? Nothing. It's like saying 2 apples plus 3 apples gives you still 5 apples. This as if you say there's 2 apples plus 3 apples and it gives you 5 apples. You tell me the coefficient by me. God, so you can see what ongelijksoortig is om op to tell. Yes, you will get things that are unlike that you've got to add. And you cannot. You cannot when you are packing apples and pears into baskets, 
you cannot put the apples with the pears or into packets to be able to sell them. You are going to say, the answer is four apples and two pears and that's it. Je kan nie die goed nie by mekaar tel nie. So if we ask a grade 8 child to do this for us, we're checking if you want to go add something here and you can't. Jy gaan nie so vir my sê, dit kan nie. I'm not allowed. Can't simplify. Kan nie vir eenvoudig nie. Enig iets in nadeel van, jyvrou, ek kan nie aangaan met die som nie. You cannot go on with this sum because you cannot add unlike terms. What makes them like? That the variables are the same. The variables are not the same, so they're unlike. You cannot add them. If they are like terms, you can add the coefficients. Raag, nog so twee voorbeeldkies, en hierdie voorbeeld is dan nou, het ons nou nou besluit, daar is, om ek al omzet so het nie, nou nou die drie dagel wees het nie, jou derde voorbeeld, en hierdie sewe termen wat ek wil optel, jy moet eerst besluit wat is die gelijksoortige termen. What are the like terms in these seven terms? The like terms have to have exactly the same variable. Waar is die goed wat die selfde veranderlik is het? Sien jy, daar is ene met de A en daar is ene met de A. So you got to get a technique together, either with a highlight pen, or like I'm going to do on the board, I'm going to underline them and say, well the A's are the same. Then there are ones that have B's. I'm going to maybe make a squiggly line, and a squiggly line, and a squiggly line. And then the others that are the same are the plus 1 and plus 3. They don't have variables. They're called constants. Those are the same as well. Goed, so hierdie constant is, wat glad nie en veranderlik het nie, so ons ook gelijk soortig. Die B's is gelijk soortig, en die wat veranderlike A het is gelijk soortig. So there are three similar um, uh, or like terms. So in hierdie gelijk soortige term, betel ek nou weer die coefficiënte by mekaar. How do I add them? Add the coefficients. So om daar by mekaar te tel, tel ek die 3 minus 2 by mekaar. What does 3 minus 2 give you? 3 minus 2 is 1. A. Do you need to put the 1 there? It means 1 times A. You don't have to put the 1 there, but you can if you want to. But if it was minus 1, you had to put the minus. But you can't, you can put minus A or you can put minus 1A if you want to. But in this case, you can either put the 1 or you can leave it away. As it feel gemakkelijk voel om eerder een te skryf, dan doen jy dit vooral vir nou. So as jy optel gelijk soortige terme, Kry die gelijksoortige term, trek net hulle coefficiënte van mekaar af, 3 minus 2 is 1. Let's do the B's. The B's, the coefficients are, plus 3, plus 1 gives me 4B, but minus 3 gives me 1B. So 1B again. If you want to put the 1 there, you do. As ek na die B coefficiënte gaan kyk, 3 plus 1, min 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, Min 3 is 1 van die B is. Niks gebeur met die B en jy staan net daar. En dan laasens van groot 1 af het jy geleer dat plus 1 en plus 3 geef vir jou plus 4. This you've been taught long time ago when you're in grade 1 that plus 1 and plus 3 is plus 4. So how many terms in the answer? 1, 2, 3. Daar is 3 terme in die antwoord. Die constante is 4. What is the constant? It's 4. And uh, what else can I ask you here? Can you add them together? No, because they're all unlike. This one has a variable of A, variable of B, and this is a constant. Hierdie is ongelijk soortige terme, want hy het a veranderlijke van A, hy het a veranderlijke van B, en hy het glad nie a veranderlijke nie, so ek kan hulle nie by my kaart tel nie. One more example before I can give you your homework. Now, if I write on the board exercise 6.4, oefening 6.4, ek het nog in die Afrikaanse boek by my huis, so ek het dit op bladse 71 gevind, so I'm not going to write the, the page number there exactly right for you. I'm going to try and give you an indication, but please check if your English textbook is also on page 71 for exercise 6.4 and make it the correct page number. Asseblief mense dat ons saam sal werk. So, hulle sê vir vereenvoudig hierdie ding, so ek weet, ek moet die gelijksoortige terme by mekaar tel. If I have to simplify this, I've got to get the like terms to be able to add them together. So now, something I want to put under your attention, iets wat ek wil hier moet kyk. Soms sal hulle vir jou ietsie soos hierdie skryf. Kijk, hier is baie A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, all the way. As hulle om dat achterste voor sit, maak jy om altyd alfabeties. 
If they do shuffle it around the wrong way, please make it alphabetical so that you can better see which ones look the same. Because sometimes B A square and A square B look the same or A B square look the same and it's not. Make it alphabetical so that you can better see if they are alphabetical, that they are like terms or not. All of these are alphabetical. If they weren't, you would write this as 5, then A square, then B. And be careful, the square is just by the A and not by the B. So when you swap them, the square goes together with the A. That power, together with its exponent, moves that way around. Why would I do that? Just to be able to see which ones are similar, which are the like terms. Hoe kom doen ek dit? As het nie so was dat die A's en B's altyd A eerste en B tweede was nie, doen dit, dat jy kan sien wat is gelijksoortig. So die gelijksoortig is, kom ons begin met die begin. Is daar nog een wat sê A, B kwadraat? A, B kwadraat, A, 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 B kwadraat, A, A, daar sy. A, B kwadraat, die keer het ek die squeakie lijne gebruik vir die A, B kwadraat, maak seker is daar nie nog een A, B kwadraat nie? Nee. So daar is die twee wat gaan gelijk wees aan mekaar, gelijksoortig. For the like terms, I tested whether a b square, is there another a b square? No, no, a b square, no, a b square. But a square b is not the same, it's not like. I will go and put the a square b's together. a square b, a square b, a square b, a square b. Sien jy dit? Amal wat a kwadraat b is, a kwadraat b is, a kwadraat b is, a kwadraat b is, het ek saam gesit. Self beteken. Gebruik miskien jou highlight pen om vir jouself in pink al die selfdes te sit en geel al die selfdes te sit. Maybe use your highlight pen if you don't want to use this technique that I'm using on the board because I can't highlight. And then I also got the plus 5. Is there something else? A constant. Daar is a constant is. Daar nog constant is wat gelijk soortig is aan mekaar. Al die constant is is toch gelijk soortig. So that will be minus 20 en ook die plus. 40. Nou weet ek wat met by mekaar kom. So if I add, what do I add? I only add the coefficient. So a b square will be how much? Minus 3 en minus 19. Ek kyk net na die coefficiënte, die getal voor die veranderlijke van die term. Die getal voor die veranderlijke is min 3, die getal voor die veranderlijke is min 19, gee min 22. Dan is ek klaar met die squiddies. Now I'm going to look at these ones with the double lines, those like terms, I'm going to add them. Daar gaan een sekere aantal a kwadraat b wees, a kwadraat b wees. But I have to find out how much, hoeveel a kwadraat b, because I'm going to add the coefficients. Jy tel net die coefficiënte by mekaar. Plus 5 en min 10 is min 5. Plus 5 en min 10 is min 5. Plus weer met 3 geef vir my min 2. Nog weer min 20, hier vir my min 2 en 20. So if you add the coefficient, it's plus 5. Minus 10 is minus 5. Plus 3 is minus 2. Another minus 20 is minus 22. Soos wat jy geleer is met heel getalle op te tel, you've been taught how to add integers that way. And then the last thing is adding the constant numbers. Kom ons tel die constantes van mekaar. Plus 5 en min 20 is min 15. En min 15 en plus 40 geef vir my plus 5 en 20. 5 minus 20 is minus 15. And another 40 gives you 25. So my answer has 1, 2, 3. Unlike terms, because if they were like, I would add them together. Your homework, please, for the next lesson, which would be the next day tomorrow, will then be... Still the same exercise, exercise 6.4, number 2.2, 2 point 2.3, 2 point 2.4 en 2.8. Jou huiswerk, dank u vir die 6.4, kyk as het die verbeerachte blad sy. Daai vier sommekie, so dat ons morgen kan verder klaar maak.